Hello students, welcome back to another class of business studies. I hope all of you are doing well and fine. Wishing you all a very happy new year. God bless you all. So in our last class, we studied about the statutory corporation, all its features or characteristics or nature. And in our today's class, we're going to study the merits and limitations of a statutory corporation. So the merits of statutory corporation, they are as follows. The first one is the statutory corporations are free from government rules and regulations. They enjoy freedom of operations and their operations are flexible in nature. Yes. So here the major merit or uh, advantage of statutory corporation is they enjoy independence and freedom in their functioning or operation and they have high level of flexibility. So flexibility means there can be any adjustment, there can be any changes made. So they are free from any government rules and regulations or control. So this is what is said as a first merit of statutory cooperation. They enjoy total independence or freedom in their functions and they enjoy good flexibility, operational flexibility and they are free from government rules and control and regulations. The second merit of statutory cooperation is government does not interfere in their financial matters since the funds of these organizations do not come from the central budget. Yes. The next merit of statutory cooperation is since the funds are not coming from the central government or central budget according to the central budget what is decided it's not coming from there. So usually government does not interfere in the financial matters including their income and receipt or including their uh, you can say uh, profits or losses anything any as such matters financial matters are they don't have this interference from the government because government the funds are not coming from the central budget of the government and that is why it becomes a merit here. The next merit of statutory cooperation is they frame their own rules and regulations, policies and procedures within the powers assigned to them by the act. Yes, since they are the organization that frame their own rules, policies, regulations and procedures and they have all the power assigned according to the, to the act. Okay, so this is what is nothing but they have total freedom again. They can frame their own rules and regulations, laws and policies and powers which is assigned to them by the act. The fourth merit of statutory cooperation is a statutory cooperation helps the, in the economic development of our country. It has the power of the government as well as the private enterprise. Yes, the fourth merit or advantage of statutory cooperation it is a very important and valuable instrument of economic development. It helps and contributes a lot towards the economic development of our country. And it has the power of both, that is a combination of both government as well as the private enterprise. So these are the four points of merits we have in our statutory cooperation. Now we're going to study about the limitations or the drawbacks of statutory cooperation. So statutory co cooperation also suffers from several uh, limitations. They are as follows. First one, in reality, a statutory cooperation does not enjoy much operational flexibility. All their actions are subject to many rules and regulations. Yes, actually, we studied in our merit that the statutory cooperation, they enjoy operational flexibility. They have total freedom as such. But actually in reality, the corporation does not enjoy much operational flexibility. All the actions are actually, uh, they are subject to many rules and regulations, rigid rules and regulations. So this is actually in reality, it's not a merit, it is a demerit. The second point of limitation is they suffer from government and political interference and therefore they lack freedom of decision making yes so here what happened is it's very common practice it's very common here government and political interference is always found especially where there is major decision making or where there is huge funds involved there is always you can say government and political interference in such cooperation so this becomes a drawback again the next limitation the third limitation is these organizations deals with the public and therefore corruption is the most common factor which becomes the greatest drawback of these organizations. So where there is any dealing with the public then corruption is a common practice. So corruption will exist and will be there 
for sure obviously in such organizations because it deals with the public and that is why this corruption becomes the most common factor of drawback it becomes the biggest drawback it becomes the biggest limitation or disadvantage of this statutory cooperation the fourth demerit or limitation of statutory cooperation is these organizations do not have any freedom to enter into contracts and take any decisions on their own this further delays action yes so the government has the practice here what happens is they appoint some advisors and uh, to these cooperative boards and this will actually take away the freedom and uh, independence of such uh, statutory corporations so they have no actually they don't have any right or freedom to enter into contracts or take their own decisions and in such a case what happens is there is delay in decision making and there is delay in action so this also becomes the greatest drawback in statutory cooperation i hope you have understood dear students the merits and limitations of statutory cooperation in our next class we'll study about the government company and its features thank you